So ladies and gentlemen, before I get into today's video, I want to give out a huge shout out to the notification bay of the day, and it goes to Fred Peterkin and Infinity Factorial, as well as Reagan Asubanteng. I probably really butchered that, but I want to make these intros a little bit shorter for the notification bays of the day so that I'm not just like reading off every single person that commented, because then, you know, it's, it's not really fair. So I want to give it to the people that were here first commenting. So it goes to Fred Peterkin, Infinity Factorial, and Reagan Asubanteng, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And if I'm not, I apologize. These are your notification bays of the day. You know the usual thing that I like to say. If you want to be the notification bay, or bro if you prefer, of the day, all you have to do is hit that ding-dong notification bell on my channel so that you will be notified whenever I upload a brand new video. And also be sure to smash that like button on this video and be sure to subscribe for future content. And that way, you too can be a notification bay of the, of the day. And together, we can hit a 1,000 subscribers. Without any further ado, let's get into today's video. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is your host with the most, Avery LR32, here bringing you guys an interesting video discussion today. And I wanted to talk to you guys today about your ratas and i'm asking the question to you guys today do you think that konami is getting a bit out of hand with these erratas do you think that maybe some of the erratas that they have incorporated in some of these older cards and even newer cards have gotten a bit out of hand and do you ever see konami potentially going back on some of these erratas and kind of backtracking to make these cards a little bit better the reason why i want to make a video about this was because of the fact i was thinking about today and also the other day just like how many erratas we've gotten uh, recently, whether it be from, you know, cards that have never been hit on the balance, like Darkness Approaches, they changed it to where it flips a monster into face down defense mode. Um, and it was funny because that was right after I made my video that Konami came out and made an errata for Darkness Approaches where it just flips a monster in face down defense mode and if, in, instead of face down attack position. So that was interesting. Um, and then, of course, we saw Konami give an errata to Chaos Emperor Dragon, which has not yet hit here in the TCG at the time of me making this video. But yet, it's still a good card. But yet, that hasn't been the case for every single time that Konami has made an errata. Some erratas, such as Chaos Emperor Dragon and Ring of Destruction, made the cards still good. They just kind of made them a bit more balanced so that they weren't such blowout cards. Same thing kind of with Crush Card Virus. It was a much more busted card before the errata, don't get me wrong, but even with the errata, when it was being played in Burning Abyss, it wasn't a ter it wasn't so terrible of a card. The problem is what made Crush Card Virus so bad is the fact that your opponent can destroy up to three monsters with 1,500 or more attack in their deck. They get to choose. So that's not good in Burning Abyss, obviously, because you don't want your opponent getting the Burning Abyss effects off. So it's with things such as that that the card almost... It didn't become completely useless, but it really nerfed the entire powerhouse of the card so to speak and a very very extreme example would be sinister serpent obviously sinister serpent was a very good card back in slower formats such as 2005's goat format but even today it can't really be that abused even before it's errata like the most it could be abused is with Raigeki breaker phoenix wing wind blast and those cards really aren't seeing any competitive play for those of you who don't know what the errata is whether you're new to the game or just forgot about it its effect is that during your standby phase if this card is in your graveyard you can add it to your hand that used to be its bare bones effect pretty much but now they added on an errata that says also banish one sinister serpent from your graveyard during your opponent's next end phase and you can only use this effect of sinister serpent once per turn so the fact that you have to banish a sinister serpent from your graveyard pretty much forces you to play three because i mean who's going to play two sinister serpent and have the dead draws you know what i mean um so the fact that you have to play three sinister serpent and then banish one at your opponent's next end phase just to still get that copy of Sinister Serpent back into your hand just makes it kind of completely worthless to even play the card. And if you completely take the uh, errata out of the equation to where you don't have to banish a copy of Sinister Serpent, the card could be at 3 and still not be broken. And I don't see how it could possibly be broken in Link format. I mean, okay, you summon Sinister Serpent, send it to the graveyard to make a Link 1 uh, Link monster, okay, and then you get it back to your hand in the end phase. What's the big deal with that? It's a self-replacing card. It's not busted at all in the slightest. Reason why it was busted back in the day was because of the fact that you constantly had 
monster recursion. So you could constantly use Sinister Serpent for tributes for like Air Knight Parshath or Jinzo or a Monarch or whatever the case may be. And then you would get it back into your hand at the end of the turn. It was basically a, a slower, much slower version of Treeborn Frog. And when Treeborn Frog came around, it just made it a lot more busted. Like there's literally no reason for you to play Sinister Serpent at all. You, you might as well just play Treeborn Frog. Like, Sinister Serpent was power creep by True One Frog, let's be honest here. And I could bring up plenty of more other examples. Um, even cards that are banned might even get this treatment, like Snatch Steel. Snatch Steel, if you guys remember, came back in the Necros format and was obviously still a busted card, so they banned it again. They could easily, you know, nerf this card into Oblivion and make it completely useless. Um, they could do the same thing with Change of Heart or even, you know, Monster Reborn, if I could find it here. You know, that they, they can make it something just... A completely useless card like Sinister Serpent, or they can make it more balanced like Ring of Destruction so that you're not ending up with ties, or kind of make it semi-decent to almost useless uh, in the case of Crush Card Virus. And I want to ask this question again to you guys. Do you think that some of these erratas might be backtracked even in Link format or uh, right before Worlds or whatever the case may be? At, at any point in this game's lifespan, do you guys think that, you know, perhaps we could see a change in these erratas? Because keep in mind, Konami isn't limited to how many erratas they do. Like, you know, just because they gave Sinister Serpent, Ring of Destruction, and Crush Card all one errata to, in order to bring them back doesn't mean that they're limited to just one errata. I mean, for God's sakes, look at... Uh, what was it? I think Convulsion of Nature had like a bunch of different erratas. Like it had like six or seven. Um, I might be thinking of something else, but I remember that there was one card that had like six or seven different erratas. And it was just absolutely insane. Oh, it was uh, Necro Valley. Necro Valley had like six or seven different erratas until it finally became the effect that it is today. Just because Konami has been trying hard to make that card not completely overpowered like a Vanity's Emptiness or something like that. Like they want to make it a, a fair and balanced floodgate. And I mean, here, e even give me one second. I'm going to pull up Necro Valley and show you all the erratas. All right, you guys, sorry about that. So, as you can see, this goes to perfectly show that Konami is not limited in how many erratas that they can do. You had the original effect, then you had the first errata, the second errata, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh errata until they finally got it right in Duelist Saga. And it is definitely interesting to look at all of the changes that they made from like the very first effect to where, you know, cards involve involve graveyards are negated, neither player can move cards from play, to now it's just negate any card effect that changes types or attributes in the graveyard. And cards in the graveyard can't be banished. Like it just it's very cut and paste dry, very straightforward. Um they even cut out a point right here. Oh, no, 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 no. They, they didn't cut out. I was about to say, I don't remember the 500 attack and fence being ever uh, taken away from them. Uh, but, like, you can even see right here, except for their own effects. And it just, uh, they completely take that out in this 7th errata. So, th this just goes to show you that Konami will do whatever it is that they need to do to make sure that a card is balanced. Or if it gets too out of hand, they'll either hit it or just, you know, give it a bunch of crazy ass erratas just to make sure that it's fair so let me know what you guys think do you guys think that we could see some more cards come off the ban list once we hit link format in the form of erratas and then maybe have later erratas to you know help make these cards not as bad or not as broken or do you just feel in general that erratas are getting out of hand with how many that konami have been giving out to these old cards um let me know all of that and more in the comments below i know that this is kind of a rambling video but hopefully i was able to get my point across for you guys um i would love to see y'all's response in the comments because i don't think a lot of people really talked about this and uh i would love to see some video responses as well I'm very curious to see what the community as a whole has to say about this because I think it's a very under-discussed, um, what do you say, topic. Um, kind of like how, you know, I made a video, I want to say like maybe a year or two ago, where I said every card off the front off that's cur that was on the ban list at that time could come back with the correct errata. And that's very true. I mean, look at Crush Card Virus. It got an errata. It's back at three. No one's playing it. Sinister Serpent didn't need an errata, but now it's at three and it has an errata. We can see the same thing with Chaos Emperor Dragon and Yada Garasu. Give them the correct errata and they can be back at three and no one would play them or they would at least be a balanced card. Anyway, I'm rambling at this point. Thank you guys for watching as always. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, save this video to your favorites. Be sure to hit that ding dong notification bell, and you too can be a notification bay of the day. And thank you for watching as always.